says U.S. officials are concerned that North Korea may try to disrupt the upcoming Winter Olympic Games in South Korea. As CNN's Brian Todd reports, the U.S. and South Korea are preparing for that possibility. As tensions with Kim Jong-un's regime intensify, U.S. law enforcement and security agencies are ramping up coordination with their South Korean counterparts. Just eight weeks before the Winter Olympics, concerns are mounting that North Korea might engage in a violent provocation to disrupt the games, which are being held just 50 miles south of the DMZ. My concern are softer targets, and obviously things that uh, North Korea might do to provoke the South Koreans to, to attempt to, to, to cause either um, the games being shut down or uh, events being moved or potentially war. Security experts say soft targets like transportation hubs, schools, and shopping areas could be targeted by the North Koreans during the Olympics. Could athletes from America and elsewhere be in danger? U.S. Ambassador Nikki Haley hinted at it on Fox when asked if America would send its team to the games. Do you feel comfortable sending family members if they were athletes on our team? I think it depends on what's going on at the time in the, in the country. We have to watch this closely and it's changing by the day. But now the White House and U.S. Olympic Committee say America is planning to send its athletes to the Winter Olympics. Still, there is a unique security threat at these games. The location and razor-sharp tensions over Kim's missile tests have the region on edge. North Korea has used tunnels to try to insert commandos and frogmen into South Korea for spying and assassinations. And the regime has a history of violence surrounding major South Korean sporting events. A South Korean airliner was blown up by two North Korean agents in 1987, with all 115 people on board killed. One of the agents was captured and said the bombing was ordered by the North's leaders to disrupt the 1988 Summer Olympics in Seoul. And during the 2002 World Cup in South Korea, North Korean patrol boats engaged in a skirmish with the South, leaving several servicemen on both sides dead. Analysts say Kim has strong motives for disrupting these Winter Olympics. He is facing the prospect of two years of maximum economic strangulation through sanctions and other law enforcement measures to really cripple his economy. He's going to look for ways to fight back. One way to fight back is to hurt the South Korean economy. The South Korean economy right now is 100% focused on a successful International Olympic event. So imagine cyber sabotage. So you don't kill anybody, but you just disrupt the economic flow, the transportation flow. You create a headache for the South Korean government. You make the South Koreans look bad. They lose face. Analysts say if the North Koreans don't engage in a violent provocation during the Winter Olympics, they're at least likely to send spies into South Korea during the games. They say the Olympics will offer the North Koreans an opportunity to gain economic intelligence on South Korea, to place sleeper agents there, and to make contact with the North Korean agents they already have in South Korea. Brian Todd, CNN, Washington. Filipinos in Israel are advised to take caution amid protests there. The Philippine Embassy in Tel Aviv has released a security advisory urging Filipinos to avoid some of the famous sites like the Temple Mount and Damascus Gate. The Philippine Embassy estimates there are around 31,000 Filipinos working and living in Israel. Violent protests and international condemnation followed U.S. President Donald Trump's decision to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Palestinian protesters and Israeli security forces clashed Friday amid heightened tensions in the region. Both Palestinians and Israelis claim Jerusalem as their capital. Now in entertainment, concert king Martin Yavera is still making Filipinos young and old swoon with his classic love songs. And he is celebrating 35 years in the industry. Speaking to CNN Philippines, Martin shares the secret behind the popularity of his timeless hits. Well, I think Filipinos love love songs. You know, impossible love made possible, illegal love made legal. <laughs> They, they, we're all, they like uh, the drama? They love the drama. They love the, the mini tennis area within the song. <laughs> they, they live, like, like when do, you watch these soap operas that you see on TV, you know, they, they live their lives uh, through these, these stories. Same with the music. At, at the 35 years in the business, I find that I thought I'm supposed to, re to reinvent myself, and that's the wrong move. I think people want me at this age and older, as I get older, to only sing my songs. 
And during Martin's anniversary concert last night, a man in the audience made the night even more special. He proposed to his girlfriend while Martin was singing one of his classic hits. Watch this. We have more stories ahead. Militant groups call President Duterte a chef. His top recipe? Full-blown dictatorship. While in Pangasinan, here's what's cooking. A Guinness record through this giant puto mosaic. You don't want to miss that? Keep it here on Newsroom Weekend. Good evening to our Facebook viewers. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Babatiin ko muna yung mga nanonood ngayong gabi. Ano? Si Abby Esteban Usman says, Hi, watching from Dubai. Si Patrick Alcantara is watching us from Davao City. Si JL Cruz watching from Beijing. And si Fer R. Lopez again says, Hello. And si Christy Berida Alcala. Mara uh, good evening po sa inyong Lahat, uh, thank you for joining us tonight on Facebook. Marami na pong nagko-comment dun sa top story natin ngayon. Yung Deng Vaxia controversy pa rin, ano? Si Naj Naj Aragon, sinabi niya, sana matulungan on CNN Philippines. Welcome back. Two soldiers died and nine others were injured when their military truck fell off a cliff in Pagadian City last night. Army officials say the truck lost its brakes. They add among the passengers were troopers who got wounded in clashes with New People's Army rebels earlier in the day. The defeat of Malte terrorists in Marawi raises the question of whether there's a need to extend martial law in Mindanao again. Military and police officials believe there is. Our George Cahiles tells us why. The extension of martial law in Mindanao is necessary. This is the recommendation of both the police and the military ahead of the expiry of martial law in the southern Philippines by December 31. Interior Undersecretary Catalino Cui says the PNP recommends the one-year extension due to continuing threats from terror groups. We endorse the recommendation of PNP for a one-year extension of uh, martial law in Mindanao. Uh, principally due to the you know, existing, uh, may continuing threats pa sa, sa Mindanao from the uh, terrorist groups. And at the same time, uh, it will help, it will hasten the rehabilitation of uh, Marawi City. The military echoes Kui's statement, saying that the remnants of ISIS-inspired Malta Group and other local terror groups continue to recruit members in Lanao del Sur and nearby provinces. The Bangsamoro Islamic Freedom Fighters still carry out violent activities in central Mindanao. The Abu Sayyaf Group and sympathizers still exist in Basilan, Sulu and Tawi-Tawi provinces, and communist rebels have increased their attacks throughout Mindanao. Also, increasing... Violence initiated by the left is something to watch out for and something that we have to prepare for and confront. That's part of the reason why martial law may, need, may uh, be needed to cover other areas where potential terrorists are uh, in hiding. The recommendations of both the PNP and the AFP have been submitted to the president. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque says President Duterte is expected to ask Congress by December 15 whether to extend or to lift martial law. If the president decides to ask for an extension of military rule, Senate President Coco Pimentel says he will immediately tackle the matter with his colleagues. Senators Zubiri, Escudero, Villanueva and Poe wish to hear a security briefing from authorities before deciding on a possible extension of martial law. Minority centers Aquino, Drilon, Ontiveros, Pangilinan, and Trillanes are prepared to oppose any move to extend military rule beyond 2017. 
Party list Bayan Muna is concerned that extending martial law may lead to more alleged human rights violations in Mindanao. Earlier, House Speaker Pantaleon Alvarez told CNN Philippines he preferred martial law to stay in Mindanao until the end of the president's term in 2022. George Cahiles, CNN Philippines. The Duterte government is bent on stamping out corruption. In, the, in an event yesterday at the Labor Department's anniversary, President Duterte said he will fire an entire commission next. It's unclear what commission this is, but he says he believes all its members should be fired for corruption. Now on Monday, I will fire about one commission mismo. Lahat sila ay... Wala pakialam kung nakisali lahat o dalawa tatlo. You have to go out. Because I do not think that uh, it will exist without your knowledge. The president has fired the other officials before. Among them, Dangerous Drugs Board Chairman Benjamin Reyes, Cabinet Undersecretary Maya Valdez, and Sugar Regulatory Administration Chief Ana Rosario Paner. The president also axed Interior Secretary Ismael Sueno due to corruption allegations involving the country's purchase of fire trucks from an Austrian firm. On the eve of International Human Rights Day, militant group Karapatan stages a cooking protest dubbed What's Cooking in Malacanang? The demonstration held in Mendiola this morning featured what the group calls Duterte's recipes for a fascist dictatorship. There's the Digong's Dinuguan, Pasta Pasista, and Papaitang Buhay. The group says the recipes describe the human rights situation in the country. Karapatan says Mr. Duterte is a wannabe dictator, citing his policies, including the drug war and the martial law in Mindanao. Another protest also in Mendiola. The Salin Lahi Alliance for Children's Concerns held its annual solidarity action. The group is criticizing the president's, quote, all-out bombing of Lumad communities and mass killings in the name of the war on terror and drugs. Still ahead, X-Men producer and director Brian Singer is facing allegations of sexually assaulting a teenager. His accuser speaks 15 years later. And Kalashau takes its pride to new heights. Its rice cakes are vying for a Guinness World Record. This is Newsroom Weekend on CNN Philippines. Stay tuned. Hello, good evening to our Facebook live viewers. Uh, thank you again for staying with us through this show. Marami na akong babatiin sa inyo. Ano? Maraming salamat. Um, let's start with Rene Nieto Cabanilla. May comment siya doon sa story natin about the Dengvaxia controversy at ang uh, patuloy na investigasyon tukol dito. Sa isyong ito, no, sabi niya, every single victim of that bloody or that vaccination program program must be compensated. Si Benson Santa Ana is watching us from Taytay Rizal. Si Marilu Rodriguez Newman Sheech ay may comment din dito sa tukos sa Deng Baksha, no? Si um, also si Ramon Frederich Cagas. Si Mel Max is saying hi, more power to CNN. Thank you. At Merry Christmas din sa Advance Merry Christmas pala, no? Si Leo Malagueño um, watching from Zamboanga City, si Pascual Ryan Joy is also saying good evening. Ed Cambe says hello. Pascual Ryan Joy, ayan, nabati ko na pala siya. Si McLean Cabaneros, watching us from Doha. And si Ed Nalitnas is watching from Seoul. Si Richard Derpo says hi. And si Doris Sugimoto is watching us from Osaka, Japan, and si um, Svensson Verna is in Norway right now watching us. Good evening to you. And si Dennis Sarino watching from La Carlota. Si Ian Baktad Camus is uh, watching from Zambales. And si Alan Makapugay is watching from Mubaraz Island in Abu Dhabi, UAE. Ayan. Thank you all, all of you for joining us this evening. Um, lastly, si Ray Bendy says hello, watching from Sydney, Australia. God bless the Philippines, sabi niya. Um, and si Alimaj Rodanaba is watching from Jeddah. Good evening to all of you guys.
Newsroom's back with more stories. Will electricity rates spike if the tax reform bill is passed? Two officials sat down with their chief correspondent, Pia Ontiveros, to weigh in on the effects of the tax reform package, which raises the tax on coal. I oppose that increase um, because in our calculation, that will directly hit the consumers, uh, especially the household. Mm -hmm. And I want to put this on record, um, Pia. I'm not pro-coal and I'm not pro coal power plant. Um, yeah. I'm a pro-consumer uh, advocate. And in fact, a lot of our legislation in the Committee on Energy uh, deals with how to reduce the prices of electricity all the way down to the household level. So coal has not seen an, an increase in taxes in mm -hmm. 40 years. Napakaswerte niya. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of us have been taxed, all fuels have been taxed, and coal hasn't seen an increase in any lang taxes. Kasi, diba? <laughs> in this, in this, uh, in this government, in this, uh, in our government, that's an anomaly, mm -hmm. and that's a okay. problem. Ten centavos the, per. It's ten, ten pesos. pesos per ton. Ton. Ten pesos per minute. And actually, ton. that's the, actually the problem because, in the Senate and in the House, they all approved a 1.75, two pesos increase, per liter, in taxes on diesel. Mm -hmm. In LPG, it's one peso per kilogram. In coal, it's. 10 centavos only that's being proposed. Mm -hmm. they, they, they are happy to have a 2 peso increase in diesel and LPG peso, which will hit the poor harder. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to coal, 10 centavos, 10 centimos, oh, we should protect this. This is so special. That's, that's anomalous. It's a problem. We need to tax coal now because the poor deserve more in terms of better infrastructure. The revenue that will be raised can result in more mass transport, yeah. better roads, and so on. Lawmakers took up the tax reform bill in a bicameral conference this week. Entertainment News Now, the man accusing Hollywood director Brian Singer of sexual assault is talking publicly about his experience. Cesar Sanchez Guzman claims he met the X-Men and Superman director when he was 17. They were on a yacht near Seattle in 2003. He claims Singer pushed him into a room and wouldn't let him leave. Stuck in here in this room and this, this guy is molesting me and I'm begging him to stop. I'm not comfortable. You know, I was 17 years old. I was, it, you know, just very traumatizing. It was very terrifying because there was music being played on the yacht and nobody could hear me even if I wanted to, you know, yell. So it was really, I felt stuck, not only because I was in a room, but also just knowing that I was on a boat on, on a lake and like feeling like, you know, something could happen to me out here and I wouldn't be able to get to shore. Nearly 15 years later, Sanchez Guzman has filed a complaint for damages. Brian Singer denies the accusation. Feast your eyes on this, the giant puto mosaic of Kalashau, Pangasinan, now vying for a Guinness World Record. The town unveiled the mosaic with 300,000 pieces of puto or rice cake in different colors. It measures 208 square meters. The one who designed it, Kel Padilla, says it took three days to put together. Kalashau town is known for this delicacy. Now it aims to beat the 2012 record of Fukushima, Japan for the largest rice cake mosaic. That's what's happening in the newsroom this Saturday, December 9. I'm Mai Rodriguez. Stay with CNN Philippines where we tell the story of the Filipino.